order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? I like to talk about it. Okay, and I want to add the brown field discussion at the television. So. All right, yeah, for the trustees, five minutes in the uh, Zoom. Do you guys have any? Anything you guys want to add to the minutes to the uh, agenda? It was all set. Steve, Diane, you got anything you want to add to the agenda? No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay, so we're also full. Cool. Okay. Um, so we're waiting for uh, this David, right? Yeah. Do you want to start off with what's going on? Sure. What they present. Um, <clears throat> we have a copy, so we that for my reference. That's what want. Okay. All right. So the center has provided uh, IT services for both the town and the village of Johnson for uh, a number of years uh, since I think a lot of the past three years. Um, they have we've been really satisfied with what they've been able to provide for us. They've done a good job with uh, kind of responding to our needs, taking care of day-to-day -day operations, making sure things are up to date and performing the kind of whatever upgrades and services we need, bringing on new computers, helping us decommission older work. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're generally supportive of it. Uh, this year, they're up for renewal. Um, it's not, our recommendation that we go out for bid again, uh, because nothing's really changed. They won the last bid process. Uh, we're mostly just renewing. So uh, that is allowed under our procurement policy to continue a service uh, without going after this. How long was the last contract? Uh, the last contract was three years, three years. So can I just add on to that, Ryan? Do you mind have the contract up? So the last contract was in effect September 1st of 2018 and was a three-year contract for the initial term. And then the service agreement says that it automatically renews for each subsequent year beginning on the day immediately following the initial term, unless either party gives the two days prior written notice. So uh, what David and I spoke about was uh, before the 30 or before this contract was up, we spoke about doing a, a presentation and talking about security and these other things that we're looking for and possibly changing a few things in the contract, uh, like providing an offsite backup uh, and, and some other services that they'll get into. Um, so as a part of that, we agreed to continue the contract for 30 days to allow time to make this presentation. Uh, so we have, we have not rolled over into another year at this point. I find it a little bit troubling that it was a three-year contract and, and now we're discussing it kind of after the fact. The contract expired at the end of August. Uh, it seems like lately everything is at the 11th hour. We've had a sidewalk, we've had paving, and now we have this. Uh, I think this should have been talked about long before now, instead of basically, we don't have a contract except with a month extension. You know, I, I, I think that's a little sloppy and I think it should have been discussed long before now. Okay. I hear you. The question that Beth asked on the one year, I'm not sure, but that may be, uh, you know, the contracts for three years, we have to ratify it every year. It's, we cannot uh, force a future select board to do something. Right? We get into some contracts with that kind of a hitch where even though it's a multi-year contract, we have to 
take an action of renewing it every year, or it gets renewed automatically unless we deal with 60 days. Right, I think I that's where the think 60 that, days comes in. Yeah, I think that's what that's in reference to. This is a print, I mean, this is standard contract. Language. Yes. So the new board opted not to renew the contract after a year. What's the penalty for that? Is there any penalty for the contract? I don't, I don't know. I, don't I think know. it was just you had to give a 60 day notice that you wanted to break the contract. So it's, so it's essentially a name of the contract. Yeah. It's not a three year contract. We have the same thing with MAMS where one select board can't commit to a future select board. Yeah. I mean, we were given this today. Yeah. I mean, this isn't anywhere near as bad as Washington with a 1500 page bill and it's given to one party the day before the vote. But, uh, you know, this is kind of, I just don't like it the way it's kind of shipping. I think we got everybody. Uh, I believe that we do. David, can you hear us? Uh, yes. Hmm. Sorry for the uh, uh, tardiness. Well, that's fine. We were just talking a little bit of background. Uh, do you guys want to just a quick run of introductions? Would that be helpful? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, I'm Eric Osgood, the select board chair. Go to my left. Matt Kenny, select board. Mike Dunn, select man. Evan Nash, select board. Beth Floyd, select board, Chair of the City. Will Jensen, Chair of the Trustees. And the two, we have two on Zoom right now, Steve and Diane. And to my right is BJ uh, yeah. and Kenny. Okay. Well, welcome tonight. And uh, I guess we've got in front of us what your proposal is. So I'm reading it. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to go down through it. But our current services would be just over a thousand dollars a month if we maintain what we had. Correct. Your uh, uh, that's what the the the, uh, the current monthly uh, payment is for the services we're providing. Is there any reason not to keep the current? contracts we have um i i i did uh include some um uh i didn't really add much to the the the, the new proposal the the new proposal is essentially our um our increase uh we've we've had the contract for three years and and this is what we, we propose the increase to be there is some value add to what we uh currently have in place um but that's it's it's the 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 increase is more to do with the uh our our current rates and our um our um, you know our proposal the way we we do it now we we have raised the rates it's not to where we're we're uh pro providing for standard commercial customers and our new uh managed service clients it's sort mm -hmm. of middle of the road between what we what we had in place and what we um, uh, quote current customers. Um, uh, the only value add I, I sort of put on it is a uh, in a, um, a uh, commitment to come on site uh, once a year to do a, a, a um, sit down with a, and have a strategy meeting with uh, the 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 um, with Brian and. Um, Susan and uh, Rosemary and, and whoever, whoever wants to be in that meeting so that we can uh, uh, sort of uh, fine tune any um, uh, pieces and parts for your budget and, uh, and legacy equipment that may need to be replaced um, and forecasting and, and sort of creating a roadmap to uh, making sure your, your network stays up to, to date and um, is getting uh, protected and answer any questions that uh, that may be needed, you know, with a technical resource. And then and then this uh, we have an overall 
push lately to to adopt a better antivirus, which was part of the cybersecurity uh, assessment that VLCT put out. Um, and then uh, the only other piece and part is a is a software uh, that would go on the servers um, uh, that would better protect the servers. It's 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 a whitelisting application, but it's it, it's not a big ticket item at all. So the, really, the the cost increase is is really just the uh, you know a cost of doing business increase versus um, uh, adding pieces and parts and 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 quote unquote sticking with what you currently have. We we. We've essentially done that with the proposal. We're sticking with what you have, and um, anything else that's proposed is really down lower on pages uh, four and five. Uh, what, one of the things I will inject here is um, you currently have a, a part of this package includes a, a, a remote help desk support. Um, so. On page four, there's two options. There's one to stick with that, and then there's one to if 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 the price increase or the cost of doing business increases is, is not acceptable or something that you 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 don't see um, maintaining. Um, I, I did quote the same services without that help desk, meaning that you would you would uh, if 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 you needed help desk services, it would be a call in, and we would bill you as is or or as needed. Um, so that's the only thing really missing. We, we take out the, the annual visit and we take out the help desk and that's what that price point which would be, which is lower than what you're paying, but would, would exclude those, those services. That's the 956.50? Excuse, excuse me? Which, what you were just talking about was a 956.50 a month? Correct, that would remove yeah. the, the, the help desk. Um, uh, services um, from from the what you currently have. No, it's not that one. That's not the one. It's the one above it. It's the Tech Group Remote Care Managed Services at thirteen seventy one. Right, but he was also yeah, that, he, he, he was saying he offered another option, which, oh, which oh, took oh, out oh. which took out the help group or the help desk and I stuff like that. That would have been the night. Yeah, I I oh. can def I can definitely see where that that's a little misleading. You they, they, what I wanted to do is I, I I was the author of the proposal. I did want to set up. Here's what we currently are providing, and some of the stuff that's missing based on really that survey. And then I wanted to requote what, what our current pricing uh, proposal would be for you for the same product um, with a couple enhancements that are that are that that seem natural. Um, um, and then uh, but but really, it's more of a, a, an increase to the rate of what we charge for these, but not an increase to the rate of what we're charging for brand new customers. So it's really where the market's at for this sort of uh, these sort of services. And we know as a municipality and, and, uh, and a current client that we, we we're, 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 there was no intention to jump all the way up by any means to that level, but it's, it's that the, there, 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 there was a need to jump up uh, and raise the rate uh, based on, on uh, 2021 versus three years ago. Um, so the idea is that the, the second option would be to, uh, remove that if if the if 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 it's not something that that is passable or agreeable uh, is is we can get you back to a, a a rate similar to what you've been paying but but remove those um, remove the help desk um, and give you the same sort of proactive support uh, just with that 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 item missing. How much are average help uh, desk calls for right? That's right. Brian, so Brian, I think we want to know is on average how many hours do you think that you guys spend on a, on a monthly basis or an annual basis? Um, yeah. Um, on your desk? Do you haven't had that data, David? Yeah, I do. I do have a note on that. So hold on one second. I um I apologize having to bring this up uh, on the computer, but right. So if it's so if they use it more than thirty nine hours a year, it's worth it to keep it in. Yeah, that's a big issue. Huh? Right, right. I'm saying if, if on average the, the numbers just doesn't make sense to go to both the cheaper the cheaper budget. Yeah. It depends. It's all relative to the year. Right. One year might be light, the other is heavy. Right. 
at least we know they, they're only using it two hours now a week, but they're already forever using it 40 hours a year. Then it's no brain. But again, yeah, kind of the best point, not every year is the same. But we know this upcoming year, some of Susan's hardware that's provided by Cama, but I could be wrong about what service, but an outside service that Susan runs to record land records. Some of her hardware is provided by an outside service. So we don't upgrade it, we don't maintain it, but it does have to work with our network. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're not going to provide the support for it. We're going to end up providing the support for it, which means the, the tech group is. Right. Uh, we had other problems with our, uh, with the village, with their, uh, the scanners you had didn't work when we went to the network cloud system. Mm -hmm. And Tech Group provided a lot of hours for that. Those, those are, when we spend a lot of time with the health desk, it's not a routine issue. Like our, our routine issues were, you know, maybe five hours a month, uh, probably even less. Yeah. But then on any given year, we could have an issue that, you know, we'll spend the better part of a week trying to get it to. Yeah, let me just let me have just just those yeah, average five hours a month right there. So it says making it sense to go to the cheaper package. Yeah, just so you guys know, and Brian, uh, 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 to speak to what you were just saying, it's your 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 compass is almost right on. It's a, the last year I added up that there was like fifty hours, fifty point five hours that were put towards the the contract or underneath the contract. Um. The, the 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 line in the sand for everyone else uh, that that um, Brian may know that other you or the other board members might not know is that our managed services sort of essentially covers what's in place uh, and and then it's uh, it, uh, it, it, if something's in place already and it's it becomes un, unfunctional or not working we're there to assist and cover those things if it's something that you want to add net new. To the uh, the network, a uh, new firewall, a new access, a wireless access point, a new laptop. Those are become billable projects uh, and are separate from that. So that fifty point five hours is is time um, uh, remedying or or resolving um, issues with with current equipment uh, that you have in place. Um, uh, anything and everything. So uh, Brian, you mentioned that the everyday calls you may not call in we're, 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 we're we certainly would urge you to call in and use our help desk for anything that might be yeah, there's no such thing as a as a, a, a an issue too small so if you stayed with a remote care version and the help desk certainly use that as you know extension in your office and and allow us to to help with those issues versus taking your own time to do them um, I can certainly understand on the, the, the essential care where we would take out the help desk where you'd want to spend some time, you know, trying to, to, to fix issues uh, to save that, that, that money. But um, um, the help desk is there for uh, uh, unlimited calls um, on that package. Also, you say that the, the, uh, the tech group remote managed services, the, the top one there, that you're also providing a manual actual physical come to the come to our location yeah we 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 are partners with uh so sorry the um move my screen there we are partners with a, a number of uh uh and not partners in the sense of the same books or same company we're not a chain in other words we, we we're self-managed we're we were a locally managed group but we're we're now a part of a, a bigger uh group of consultants that are talking and, and utilizing resources and, and pools of information. And we've spent a lot of time um, in, in uh, talking to these uh, new peers and new um, uh, colleagues. And, and we've noticed that that, that on-site meeting is critical for uh, making sure that that's in place and making sure we have a good roadmap for all of our clients. Um, so it's something that we're putting into um, all of our packages as a, uh, a, a really a, a necessary uh, piece in part that 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 person will be an assigned person and that person will be somebody that 
that uh, will be a resource for you, the account manager, which is is me. It'd be a resource for you to use, you know, around, you know, the the the, the whole calendar year. But we would absolutely have somebody on site um, for for a, a a true IT strategy meeting um, with your um, department heads to make sure that we're 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 covering uh, bases a little bit better um, than we ever have before. Well, I'm going to say that to Mike's point, we really don't have any other options. And given the presentation I've seen here and what I've done for background checks to see what people have been happy with you before, um, I see no reason to, to uh, not accept the uh, 137150 uh, monthly uh, program. Wait a minute. Uh, for some reason, I thought the old contract would be printed. And if I realized the old one wasn't going to be here tonight, I would have printed one drop. I would like to know what uh, the services that we had last year, how much they cost, and how much they would cost this year if we had the same services. Yeah, so uh, to, to answer your question, if I'm reading you right, um, the, 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 the quotes are are based on on systems and licensing um, for these utilities and these these uh, some of them are security utilities, others are informational ut utilities, um, but it's all license based and the package uh, that goes along with it is based on counts. So um, I think last year we had a um, I have that we're listing that that we had one server and 15 PCs, and this is something that I can work out with with Brian on a little bit more detail. Uh, but I'm seeing uh, one server and 16 PCs in there now. Now one of those PCs may be something that is removed so that the price point would go down because this is a scalable type contract. I don't think outside of adding services, we actually raised. Um, we, we didn't raise any rates uh, like we're trying to do here, but um, the, the the price point per system last year uh, looked like it was forty three dollars per system, uh, so or or per PC, and uh, uh, in this proposal, my breakdown was of fifty five dollars. Um, the market rate where I where I sort of hinted at is is really for that same type of service out there for at least for commercial customers. Um, is more in the $75 range. So like I said, we took a step up, um, uh, but, but not, uh, we, we certainly didn't want to jump up for any legacy clients and certainly not a municipality. Um, uh, but I can, I can iron out the actual counts or reconcile that with Brian before we actually uh, go through here, because I think there's one system, Brian, that's, that may be um, uh, one we can pull and you would actually have the same numbers, the, the one server and 15 PCs, unless, unless you know in your head that it is one and 16 uh, now, so. I suspect that the additional system we're seeing is this computer that we're using right now for Zoom, that we didn't have this one previously. We didn't have okay. a computer that we were regularly using for, uh, for Zoom, but we're using it often enough now that I'm not sure how we'd want to handle it in the future. Uh, okay. Mike, specifically to answer your question, uh, take a look at page three and page four in this contract. Page three uh, kind of outlines what we had before. And then the top of page four is uh, their proposal. It's the, it's the current, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, so we're talking in uh, 360 a month more. Yeah, about uh, $360 a month, uh, and that's 4277 a year. And uh, how much is that per computer? Uh, so so uh, uh, the, the, the price per system, like I said, was is is I have it at uh, $55 when last year's it was at 43 okay. Uh The servers are different, and there's there's other things in there. We uh, Brian had us add, uh, and this was a, a slight cost savings for the town had us start managing the Microsoft um, licensing, a Microsoft 365 email licensing. Um, so we we that that was an add on. So some of these numbers may not add up in your head uh, by any means because there's other 
services there. We also added um, our antivirus uh, services. Um, once the semantic, there was a, you've, uh, the town of Johnson was using semantic, uh, that, uh, a legacy license that uh, still had support for a couple of years. And, and once that expired, we transitioned you into our managed um, antivirus. So that's uh, another piece in part. Uh, the server, we actually charge a, a little bit more. It's ten dollars more per s for for, uh, for the server um, than it is the PCs, but there's only one server versus um, sixteen PCs. So I feel like I'm, uh, I don't know what I don't know. There's a lot of things in, in this whole IT world that uh, I'm not sure what I should be asking. I guess what scares me is reading the paper about towns that are being held hostage for millions of dollars to get their information. How protected are we against that kind of uh, issue? Well, there there are um, that the the IT world is uh, is crazy. You're you're absolutely right. It's it's um, it takes a layered approach. Uh, in my email to Brian today, I called it the, uh, and this is not something I made up. It's uh, so something I heard from a coworker recently uh, that called it the security onion. Uh, there's a lot of layers to it. Um, there's a desktop layer. There's a user layer. There's the server layer. And then there's the frontline layer or your network infrastructure. Um, so there's protection sort of needed for all the devices some of them are similar, some of them are different, um, um, and they do different things. There's there's antivirus for your PCs and server, but then there's also antivirus for your, uh, you know, where the internet meets your office, which is called the gateway or uh, the your firewall uh, device in your office. So um, there's different we have to sort of plug all those holes, and there are holes in the cybersecurity assessment or survey. I'm sorry found some holes uh, based on Brian's answers uh, to it and said, you know, when Brian sent me the email, I said, can you make sure we, we sort of include these in our proposal uh, for managed services so that we can talk about some of these, uh, these holes um, if there is a, a need for them. I, 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 Brian, I'm not sure if the, uh, that, 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 uh, any of this is con is connected to compliance or your actual ins insurance rates. But one of the things folks are doing out there is they have insurance, and 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 most entities have insurance for their IT computers or cy cybersecurity insurance. And I think VLCT offers that. Um, what they're the what the the cyber insurance. Uh, uh, policy writers are doing is they're starting to raise their rates unless certain things are checkmarked, um, certain security measures. And one of them is that we just talked about is your firewall or the, where the, where the internet meets your network. Um, and we do have a business class firewall in place for the town of Johnson. It's running some good security services and checks that box. Um, the other box that would be checked is the, the antivirus, the making sure that you have a next generation antivirus solution in place that will actually detect and respond to some of these new variants and viruses that are out there. Ones that will actually stop, they, they look on, they, they look for um, what they call heuristics or behavioral characteristics in the way your computer is operating to actually shut down a virus attack um, and actually know and, and audit that virus attack. Um, and it allows IT companies like us to, to reevaluate or look at these audits and go, hey, it, this virus touched all these places as it went through the process of trying to implement but it will actually stop and remove and retrace or uh, restore your system back to before that virus hit. So it's well, when they, when they, when the VLCT came back and said, make, sh make sure your 
IT provider is, is, is equipping, equipping you with a next generation antivirus solution that has what's called EDR services or endpoint uh, detection and response services, um, we made sure that that's in part of the solution. It's, it's, as you can well know, it's actually a little bit more money to put that service in place because it's a more uh, protective uh, antivirus solution. It's not on your network now. We have a antivirus solution that was considered a next generation type antivirus service and sort of a, a leader in its field um, at, at times. But nowadays, the, the variants out there and the as, as you just said, what's what, what, what should we fear? What should we be protecting ourselves from? It's it's what they call zero hour attack um, type viruses that um, that some of these new solutions would stay uh, ahead of and or respond to in a better way. Um, and so I've made sure that that's part of this solution, this, this renewal solution to make sure that that's in there. Um, some of the other services they mentioned um, are a little bit more, um, yeah, are, are definitely more uh, uh, layered and uh, a little bit confusing. So I try to answer those back and we can go over all of those or any of those you'd like. But um, uh, one of them was DNS uh, protection services. So the town has a, a handful of uh, half, half the, uh, not half the fleet. I think I would say a third of the fleet of the computers that we're managing are portable uh, computers. If you were to take those portable computers off site, you could, if, and you were uh, uh, accessing the internet from home or from Starbucks or from you know anywhere else, you wouldn't have the same protection services or web protection services um, that uh, or filtering services that you may have uh, on policy at the office. So. If if you if 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 through your firewall we are locking down access to things that uh, like social media, pornography, gambling sites, or anything of that nature, and you wanted to have that outside of the the realm of the office with with your laptops, we can actually put DNS services in place that would uh, would make sure that that no matter where somebody was trying to access the internet with a uh, town owned computer that the policies would follow them wherever they went. Um, so that's a service that we are, are uh, just adding, uh, but, it's not the, but that's not part of, of our package here uh, because I didn't know what needs to be uh, checked or might, might need to be added uh, for compliance or insurance needs. Um, um, I'm going a little all over the board, but uh, one of our other concerns is your backup solution. So, uh, one of the best and most important things is making sure you have a secure, viable backup. Um, and the more backups you have, the better off we are. So a lot of some folks just have a primary backup. Other folks have a primary and a secondary, and uh, you can keep going. Um, there's there's folks that have a primary, a secondary, and a disaster recovery solution. So on page, I think. Five or yep, I think it's page five of our proposal. I've put on a proposal to us to more fully take over the management of your backups, um, where we would back up your server, have an on-site copy, have an off-site copy, and when I say copy, it's an image-based copy with with all the data, all the customizations, all the installs, um, and it would store it on-site and off-site. And it would be encrypted, which would check another box of your of your uh, cybersecurity survey, and it would uh, allow us to um, monitor it more closely. It would uh, it would do test restores monthly, which would check another box on that survey. Um, it would uh, we would report on it weekly, um, and the backups would essentially go out of. Uh, you know, sort of a little bit more off your concern and, and, and fully on our shoulders. Um, currently, by what we know is the backups that you have in place are either just based on your applications, uh, in this case, Nemric. Nemric does a backup nightly of the, of the data, which is critical, uh, but it's just a data backup. And then the other backup that's running is just a batch file that will run 
uh, your, some of the file folders on your server off to a, uh, a network attached system, but we don't know if what's happening with that system. Um, maybe Rose Marie or, uh, or, or Brian know if that's getting taken off site for, for any uh, purposes. Uh, but uh, having an offsite copy is always vital because if you don't have an offsite copy and something happened to the building or the facility of theft or a fire or a flood, um, the, the, the data would be gone. Um, so it, it, the, the, the services that I, I, I provided on our uh, proposal were, were strictly based on um, the survey, and, but they would provide the check marks you need for backups, encryption, on-site and off-site, and monthly test restores. And I've also listed a disaster recovery feature so that if, if, uh, if, if somebody were to break into the, the town office and steal the, the equipment, what do you do then? We, we would have your data offsite um, that we could restore from, but we'd need to restore it to a system. The disaster recovery option gives us a, a way to have that temporarily, that piece and part and that solution in the cloud uh, so we could actually point all the all the users whether they were if if a fire destroyed your building we'd be able to point uh, uh, users working remotely to the cloud and 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 have them uh, be able to uh, work remotely. Um, if it was a theft, they can they can sit in the office and they'd still have the server. It'd be virtually in the cloud. Um, so all the all the all that we provided was a um, was a mimic or a mirror image of what you were currently providing uh, or what we were currently providing. And then some suggestions based on that survey um, with the other add-on options. There's a, there's a line item for on page three, I believe, for uh, secure care security services. Um, and then the, the options for uh, server backup on, on page four um, of the proposal as well. Page four, page five. Thank you. Yeah, page four and page five. So I think it's a really important point that we do do backups, and you'll. I'm sure that as we talk about this more, we'll talk about backups. But if you have backups, it is no good to you if you can't restore them quickly and easily. And right now, memory doing backups means they just have the data. It doesn't mean we could get it back quickly. And doing the file folder backups, I assume the same is true. I assume it's yes. going out and we wouldn't be able to access it because we wouldn't have a network here to access it from. Um, yeah, and that, uh, I, I know I've been talking a lot and I apologize, but I, I want to inject that, that that batch file and the server backup where it's just backing up files, if that if that external drive isn't being taken off site once in a while, or even if it is, I, it, that I'm, we're not sure the, the actual retention it could retain for your backups. Cause it's, it's copying files and folders, but it's, it's, it's uh, Dave, Dave Curtis may be able to speak more to this, but I'm not sure if I, I can only think it's, it's, it's just replicating over what they, what you currently have. So, if something were to happen, like you would get a major virus, we may not be able to restore files if it's just overwriting them time and time again. So uh, the part of part of our proposal would actually give you retention where the offsite copy would be at least one month and the onsite copy could be as much as a year. So that if, if somebody, once again, the scenario of somebody breaking in your office or stealing that drive, that's that's mm-hmm. gonna hurt our retention for, you know, for, you know back too far, but we still have the offsite backup that would have retention up to a month, um, which would should give us enough to recover from anything, um, you know, any major incident uh, that that we can think of. And the disaster recovery is a is is not an option that we we have sold out there a whole lot. That that really speaks more to the um, to the, the the clients that just can't be down. Period for a. a, a you know, any period of time. So, so in the scenario that once again, a major incident would happen, a theft or a fire or a flood or um, complete hardware failure, we're relying on the time involved to replace that server or put something else in place that we can restore to some of these, some of these backups can actually be restored to a high end workstation, but the only ones that the town may own are ones that power users might have. And they need to do their work too. So, um, 
in the scenario of a, of a major incident, we I'll knock on wood and and but we need to talk about these things and talk about scenarios that hopefully will never happen. But if they did happen, would, would it be OK to be down for the time period it would it would take to replace that server with insurance and, and the whole process of ordering it? One of the things that COVID has done to our world, definitely on the sales side, is delayed delivery of hardware. There's a lot of backup of, of, uh, and delays and back orders with hardware equipment. Um, you know, so it's, 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 it's critical that we talk about these things to make sure that they're at least in the thought process. And if it makes sense to add things like disaster recovery as another layer on top of the, the, the the primary and secondary of the on-site and off-site, if it makes sense, then it, we, we definitely want to put it down as an option, even if it's not something that you add uh, on an onset, if you if you were interested in that service. Hey, Dave. Yep. Uh, so when you talk about doing, when you talk about doing image-based on-site and off-site backup platform, your image is being captured. I'm right here, by the way. I just still can't see me. I can see your arm. <laughs> um, the image is a daily image that you're taking. It's a no. It's it actually happens every two hours. Yeah, okay. it's it's dialed up two hours because we it, because of those new variants and and uh, ransomware attacks and all that stuff. We've we've actually had it since we onsetted the program five years, five six years ago. We we. We, I, we've always had it at a two hour cadence. So that we capture an image of your server, we, we, we put it on the, the local target on site. We, we also take it uh, back to our office and put it on our equipment um, within our racks, secure racks that only super techs like Dave Curtis has access to, um, we, you know, if and when needed. And, uh, um, and the, all the all the data that is happening. So so once that one once those seed images in place, we start replications of uh, uh, it, it, there's there's incremental data changes to that image that happen every two hours, and they 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 go to the local uh, target, and then they replicate off site every two hours, 24/7, 365 days a year. And that data will check the box. At least the data is encrypted in transit and at rest um, um, at the location. We call it Vermont Cloud. I made that 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 designation up, and it is trademarked actually. Um, but so it's it, in the we, cloud, or is it on your local hardware? We call it the cloud because everything works through the cloud. So the replications go through the cloud. But we wanted to make sure that our clients knew that their data wasn't in New Mexico or South Dakota or. Timbuktu, it was in Vermont, um, Wait, and it is in Vermont. So you're taking hourly images, and then you're storing them for those, each image you take, you're storing for 30 days, and you're using one, yeah. of, one of those images as your monthly restore. Well, so the, the image is set. Uh, it's the base image, and then there, the, the, everything That's else is cool. incremental changes, and it's every right, two I got hours. It. Got yep, it. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Dave, um, yep. uh, earlier I asked a question about you know, not having the, the older contract in front of me. I was told that the current managed service is uh, Tech Group Remote Managed Services, which is $1,015 per month. Well, I need somebody to help me out maybe with this contract, the old contract. It calls a managed service agreement package of $770 a month. So if it was seven seventy a month, that would be at ninety two hundred and forty dollars per year. Yep. So that was the old contract, correct? They correct. took over uh, managing our email licenses from Comcast. It saved us a few dollars a month uh, going through them and reduce our Comcast. So it increased our bill for the tech group and decreased our bill for Comcast. So, but the old con the old contract was. $770. So yes. was there an addendum to that or were we living by that whole time? No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I you're absolutely right. We 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 started with the uh the that base contract and I don't know if there's actually any addendums in place, but there would be I would we'd be able to produce um just email correspondence back and forth. We are getting better at that. Uh the addendums and the so so there would be uh uh um 
change document change uh, documentation moving forward. Um, there so was the this last if contract. Go, if we go with the same service, there was yep. we were paying seven seventy a month before. We'd be yep. paying one thousand three hundred seventy one dollars now, right? Uh, correct. The uh, uh, that's that's the new proposal. Uh, the old proposal was seven seventy. So now we've got to the bottom of it. Now that's the actual increase from last contract to this contract. It would be yes. Yeah, so you take all the fluff away. Correct. Uh, well, to, to well, it was, let, let me hold off on that one point. To Brian's story's point, um, we have added some services. To your point, we haven't documented those with proper addendums. Um, so that we've had, as Brian said, we added. Uh, about two hundred dollars a month in Microsoft licensing, uh, but but you replaced Microsoft licensing. You were paying through Comcast, so the the it's 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 just a transfer of of the services from one vendor to another, and there was some cost savings. I think you were paying, but what were you guys paying, Brian? Just a little over uh, two hundred, maybe two twenty five or something like that. But ours was under two hundred. Yeah, um, it was one dollar per license, but it was yeah. It did it it does cost us less for the same service. So Brian, yeah. where's our current data storage at? It's not with these guys. Our current backups yeah. are conducted. Uh, Rosemary manages those. We get regular backups of data from the server, and we store a copy in the vault and a copy at Rosemary's house, okay. and we cycle through them. It uh, is, how often? we make regular daily backups that go to the vault. I'd say that they go home more like once a month. So, and, and so that once a month is off site. It's, it's at least you have that data and it's a, it, it may be one month old. That's re, that's your retention. Um, that, that may be that, uh, age, as long as you keep that one off site the whole time. Um, but it's just just as uh, as Brian said, it's it's or somebody just said it is just the data only. So it, what, the difference between an image based backup and data only is an image based back will actually take a snapshot of your server, including the the operating system install, the customizations, the patches that go along with that, all the applications that were installed, all the data, everything. And when, when you restore it, you it, it can restore back to a, a you know, the, the, a like um uh snapshot of, of when we give where the last restore point was dave you were going to say something? that your backups are only as good as your restorability and unless somebody's <laughs> testing those backups are they even working are they restorable are they usable backups yep we're not testing and so so part of the vermont cloud backup service i propose on page four is will do um, monitoring around the clock. It fully goes on us at that point, but it, it monitor. It does those backups every two hours. It's full image, but at both on site and off site, it's every two hours. There, the all the data is encrypted. We're we're monitor. Our system is actually monitoring it around the clock. Our staff will will get alerts on it uh, weekdays, and we will report on it uh, weekly and do monthly test restores. So and it's and once again, it's checking those boxes. Thirty four hundred eight dollars a year. If we do the uh, disaster and the the cloud, thirty four eighty, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. annual. I don't believe that we need to do the disaster recovery service. I would recommend that we do the data restoration platform option, but the disaster recovery. Uh, would be it would allow us to restore faster and easier, but we would survive if it takes us a little bit longer to get up and running. I mean, if you're up in a week, that yeah, we should be get to suck, but yeah, we survive. Yeah, it's another company's are crash in 40 hours, right? So, I don't think that we need that one. That's not a whole lot of extra money, but I don't think it's necessary to spend it. Uh, the Improved backup, I think, is uh, I would highly recommend adding that to our current services. We're looking like for an eighty percent increase in our current contract for the cost of this. 
Well, if you if you take those no. Comcasts away from that original, because that Comcast was like get rid of Comcast and add it to you guys, so that kind of balances that top number a little bit. What'd you come up with? Did I come up with? Yeah. Well, well, thirty percent base. Yeah, the backup, the backup alone that Brian said was 64% increase. If we're talking only about proposed managed services, it is the difference between, from what I can tell, it is the uh, $420 difference. And that is the additional machine and the um, Additional email management that wasn't there before from that old contract and something else. There was one other thing I included. But it doesn't make any sense. Uh, to uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, which is another one that we're paying them as part of another part of why it represents on page three as $1,015.50 is that. Uh, we also switched to them from for virus protection because our existing virus protection license ran out. Yes, and and I think I'm I'm looking it up now, Brian. I think we had we may have had less PCs too. I think there was 13 on the onset. Um, no, there was 15. One one and 15. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think we've added. I think the the computer that I'm that I'm on right now is the only system that we've added. Okay. Oh, Adam has a question. Sort of slightly different topic. Um, the league is telling us that thirty percent of all cyber related events are found to be human error. Um, you know, phishing and related events. And they recommend that we do regular formalized training. Is that anything that you do, or is that it? if you have some curriculum? I know that a, a large part of tech, tech support that's really valuable is just getting an email once in a while informing you of what sort of the latest scam is. Um, yep, yep, you're absolutely right. They call it you uh, security awareness training or user awareness training. Uh, it is a service that we can provide. I did not quote it on here. I. Um, I tried to limit what I proposed uh, based on just the cybersecurity and my interaction with Brian. And then Brian, I'm going to I'm going to come to Brian's defense here. He did not ask for anything specifically. He just emailed the the, the, the message back from VLCT and said, can you make sure we we at least put some of these services on a proposal so we can talk about them? Um, so that so, um, question. So you do have that training that would be available for the yes. Is that, a, is that a quarterly thing? Is that a biannual thing? How, it's how it is uh, something that's on a monthly uh, 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 service. You can run the you can run the campaigns any way you want, but the licensing is a something that's provided and billed on a monthly basis. Um, meaning that that the 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 uh, the services would stay in place and the campaigns for it uh, that you would run. So part of part of the whole process is running sort of fake campaigns that would actually uh, give you some actionable data to respond to that allows you to send out like a false email and see who clicks on it um, and see who's uh, that, that user error. There's, there's human nature and there's curiosity and there's a lot of things that go in. Uh, and, and you're absolutely right. The worst part, the worst uh, threat to your network is the users and that not just the users at the town of Johnson, it could be users at tech tech group too. We all need to, um, you know, get a, a little uh, the, the user awareness training and the security awareness training allows uh, more access to training and how to better to use best practices when using a computer and what, what to look for and um, it's become a very uh, useful tool out there for a lot of, um, you know, uh, companies and IT managers within companies uh, to to have in place. It runs about, I would say, about four dollars per user per month, and uh, then the the monthly campaigns. We do have a couple different services. We have one that's sort of a set in it and forget it. It would be an onboarding fee to put it in place. And then it's sort of, it runs a little itself. It's a little stripped down version of the one that 
VLCT promotes, which is no before. So we are a no before provider on a mic or on a managed service level. We can provide those licensing uh, for about four dollars per user per month. What's a, um, what's a user? Is it, a, is it per terminal or no? Nope, it'd be email address? It'd be an email address. Um, now, oh, now yeah. I think I think you can absolutely you can actually absolutely be selective. Meaning, I think you have thirty eight email addresses. But if you say oh, I just want the sixteen users in the office, okay. we can do that. Um, so it's it it can be selective where you could just it's it's just designed for those. But unfortunately, we can't change it. The most effective way to run it is more campaigns more often. But we, we certainly understand smaller firms and companies, and we're the same size as you. So when I say smaller, I hope that's not an insult. Um, but we, we, on, on, on smaller networks like the Tech Group and, and, and the Town of Johnson, that, uh, that, that may not be a need to run one once a month or whatever. The licensing is what is really just the overall charge, and that is provided on the... There's no way for us to dial that back from what the platform offers. Um, but we can we can limit the campaigns that are run, um, you know, to a, uh, a, a, a you know more of a, a quarterly basis or a biannual or whatever you whatever you prefer. Okay, we're closing in on the hour, so I, I'd like Sorry to about call that. the select board. Are the members feeling comfortable? With any of the proposals thinking in any direction right now? I'm feeling comfortable with the proposed managed services tech group remote care managed services at 1371. I don't love the numbers, but I'm going to have to love the numbers. I'm also really supportive of the um, Vermont Cloud data restoration platform. I think I really think we should do that. Uh, and I'm not really so sure about the tech group secure care security services. I'm not really sure how that differs from some of the other things that are listed above, to be completely honest with you. Okay, Evan, what are your thoughts? Not crazy about the numbers, but I'm comfortable with the remote care managed services, the 1371, the really option. And what about the, uh, Beth mentioned the restoration platform, one of my colleagues. Not a bad idea, but it's extra $2,400 a year. My fear is that we can't restore from what we have, or we're way behind. Mike, what's your thoughts? You had that one ninety five a month for that other deal, and you're talking $18,798 a year. Sure. Sure. And uh, I'm not happy to spend that kind of money. You guys, you guys, you guys, don't you have an alternative? We do not currently test that. You can't. Uh, I suppose we could. I mean, I imagine that we could. So from day one, you could have been backing them up and they could have been junk and you have no idea. I assume that they didn't start out that way when we had uh, Larry was our previous IT person who was on site on a pretty regular basis. Now that Larry isn't on site anymore. Uh, it's not anything that Rosemary or I have done. Yeah, even if you did maintain that type of backup that you're running now, if you had any kind of ransomware attack, it would destroy all that data. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say never. No, I have never personally done it, but I, I would be surprised if it's never been done at all. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Will. Eric, can I make one more? I, I do agree with that. And I just say in terms of the cost, it, it is a cost, but it's money well spent. It's it's a heck of a lot better than crashing, ransom, you know, like any of those things, just it will be a huge cost for us to bear. So it's a big I I, uh, I asked for just to in, interject one more item. Uh, that I understand that the secure care uh, package is 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 pushing the envelope, but I did want to mention that uh, a lot because a lot of people don't think this way when they hear they hear a lot of the word cloud 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 this cloud that your email is in the cloud so it's not on your server it's 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 your your platform is microsoft 365 
your emails in the cloud. Uh, Microsoft 365 is not a backup utility. It's a resource for your email and they have plenty of data centers and they back up data and they do that stuff, but they don't, they wouldn't restore you if your email addresses got hacked and you lost any data. They, they would they would say we're not responsible for your data. Um, they do not they would not be able to restore things that are lost um, by accident or by deliberate uh, action. Um, so the only other thing that is is part of that secure care package is a cloud to cloud backup utility that can also be selective, um, and. That backup utility is meaning selective, meaning if you had a, a couple users, department heads that were had critical email that you need make sure that you, you can't lose, uh, that cloud to cloud backup would back up each user for $3 per user per month. That's it, it can be separated. All the, the, those services that are listed there are all standalone services, and I can separate them if any have an interest, and that's the one I wanted to point out that you're, if, if you're gonna back up your server, which is very important, um, you, you, you need to know that the email is not in on that server and that the emails it can be vulnerable too. Um, the select board, I pulled the select board and basically they're all in the consensus of agreement of managed services at 13, 71 and we added restoration platform at 195. Yeah, so uh, let's ever see. So, your thoughts? Uh, I'm not really very knowledgeable on this, but I'll just go with uh, the consensus of the, of the select board. And I feel like we need the protection. Oh, yeah. Um, I agree with what Nat was saying, and I think it's something that we need, and it's good money spent. Um, I, I have a question. Are, do we have um, the cybersecurity insurance? Do we have that? We don't. The league is in the process of spinning that off as a separate uh, part of our insurance company. Okay. We are covered in general by our our insurance policy, but we did not have specific cyber insurance, cyber security insurance. But that will be something that we're going to be required to get in the future. Okay, I I agree with the select board. I go along with them. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Chair, first of all, I want to again acknowledge Mike Dog's uh, comment about this being a last minute, got to do it. We don't have a whole lot of choices. We have no options. Uh, as a chair, I'm not real happy to be in this position. Uh, that aside, uh, the trustees seem to be a consensus with the 137150 plan, the tech remote care managed services, as well as the Vermont cloud data restoration platform. So we would be happy to uh, agree with the select board. I think we'll both have to take a separate vote. Yeah. yeah. I would entertain a motion at this time to identify those two items with the uh, tech group. Please uh, spell out the contract policy. Oh, uh, so I move to for the select board chair to sign for the contract with uh, tech group uh, to contract for the tech group remote care managed services at thirteen hundred seventy one dollars and fifty cents per month and also. Vermont Cloud Data Restoration Platform at $195 per month uh, for a one-year term. What's the proposal? Is this a three-year contract proposal? It's it's uh, the 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 uh, it's it's one, two, or three-year. Uh, the 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 
the caveat is is to uh, that 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 the longer the term, the the better we can re lock in those rates. Um, For a three year term. And um, also the additional seven hundred and eighty dollars for uh, onboarding of the uh, of the data restoration. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, six five, say aye. Aye. Those opposed. Aye. aye. And the chair votes in favor of aye. The motion passes. So who voted against Mike and Evan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So seven eight, the onboarding page. Yeah. Where did you get the onboarding It's right there on the last page. That's not the contract. Okay. That's your adding an additional service takes on data. Oh, okay. Yeah. The no contract is 19,578. Pretty. Okay. All right. Okay. So, let's see if I'm looking for a motion. Uh, motion to accept uh, tech group remote care and service for $1,371.51, along with the Vermont Cloud Data Restoration Platform, $100. $95 in the 780 onboard fee. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Uh, motion and a second. Any discussion? Diane? You want to say? No. Steve? No. With that, I'll call the question. All those in favor, said motion signify with an aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Uh, we'll on the call. Yes. If you've got members attending remotely, then you go ahead and be anonymous. I'm going to roll call right now. Yeah. So. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Steve? Aye. Diane? Aye. Kenny? Nay. DJ? Aye. Chair is nay. Passes three to two. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Okay. Uh, Brian, Brian uh, if you're still there, I, uh, okay. I, I can touch base with you in the morning. Yep, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. Have a good evening. You too. So the next topic is the uh, storm monitoring. Yep. We just did a 19,000, yeah, we have a $78 contract. So that's the No, I didn't. All right, what's the next one? Uh, it's it's just the can't storm monitoring issue Manchester province. It used to be a fairly simple town village agreement that like to like basically a culvert of this town with a stormwater drain or drained into the river that was the village. Right. It was yeah. open and it was ours. Yeah. Uh, this one's a little bit <laughs> well, it's not something that you guys had recognized. Yeah. And it wasn't something we had recognized. That's what's the issue. Well, we had a, a sinkhole that happened on River Road East, and uh, was uh, on the ownership of it, and, and we had to finally uh, repair it on the road back then. Yeah. So, and there's, I believe, two others still so on train today. Say that again. You have two others. I can hardly hear you because of this thing in the yeah. back. Well, so up here for how many stormwater drains do you have? You mean uh, culver culverts that are crossing the road? Uh, there's uh, probably four or five I'd have to count. There's there's one right at right at the edge of the property. I don't know if you've got it as tired or not, but you know it gets it gets water coming down Railroad Street. Uh, 
Nope, comes over to it, gets stuff off the fire there. So, there, there is. I guess the concern was some of these others are in some uh, full of sheep as well. And well, nobody's looked at them. Yeah. Like, I, I think there's an assumption that made because this one failed, right. that the other ones are going to fail. But this, this one has, has failed 20 years ago. And, and we told the town, the town and village about it. And the town said it was a village problem. The village said it was a town problem. So, 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 it was, so it was at least it was at least 20 years ago. We we repaired it right at the edge of the of the uh, travel portion, and it was fine until this until their son when the whole thing finally failed. So I, I don't think that means that the other ones are imminently going to fail. It's that particular one, you know, those, that stuff was put in prior to the 70s. You know, some some time prior. Prior to us only we. We owned it, you know, since like '62. So these things were put in before you, before you bought them. Yeah, the culvert crossing the road. Right. We did, you know, that culvert that failed was originally a daylight culvert. In other words, either side of it. Yeah. Know, and and as we built the thing up, we put some, you know, catch basins, and because because we put some fill in. Right. But that that also was done back in the late '60s, early '70s. We said that's not in the mirror reference. That's that's when it failed 20 years ago. It, it failed 20 years ago. One of my one of my guys carried in the parking lot one spring day, you know, had the wheels drop out, you know, it washed out. And you could see the you know the culvert was rusty, but we were able to patch it right at that spot. Right. At the time, I think Gordy was a foreman, I think, and I told him about it. And he said, because it had catch basins, it was a village problem. And, and the village said, because it was originally a, a daylight culvert, it was a town problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've, sp I've spoken to a couple of different road formers over the years, reminding them of it. And nothing happened until it was a failure that it so it had to be fixed. Yeah. So, I mean, going back to the original, what you talked about, you know, it's daylight, and, you know, it's open, it's an open end, it's a town issue. Sure. So, which it sounds like it may have been at one point, but now it's got a catch basin. You know, that's nothing, nothing we saw. We can't, we can't take, we can't take on infrastructure. Well, we need to do. So, it seems to me like we have two guys on both of our crews that should probably go down together and talk, look it over, see what's going on down there, and figure out what the right approach is. Like us on the board sitting here talking about it. Is irrelevant if we have experts who should be. It's not so much what to do with it, it's a matter of whose responsibility is it. And we have to set the policy because, you know, those guys will just follow whatever policy. Right. Is. And then how do you look at it? Do you look at it what it originally was, or do you look at it as how it is now? Because there's nothing that there's nothing that the village added to their infrastructure. If it was something that was done on a private property, then we, we're not taking ownership of it. That's that's my stance. Always there's four other people on board, but I, I don't I don't see you guys. On, uh, I can't see someone putting an infrastructure going on that belongs to the town. So if they put it underneath your infrastructure, then that's that's just leave that. That's my stance. I mean, I'm happy to send Troy down and use his expertise to take a look and see if something's going to be immediately in imminent danger of, of, of collapse and stuff like that, and definitely use this expertise on that. But as far as being fiscally responsible for, for the infrastructure that I don't think we're in a position to take that on. What was the initial thing? Before, some of that was before you bought it, right? Yeah, I have no idea. You know, it was done in practice. It was, you know, the culprits across the road, all of our existing yeah. when we got there. The only thing we did is Change some of the catch bases from the daylight, right? But you could but the, you that, the culvert that actually failed was either town or village property. Well, if you go back, it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been village. It was a daylight. We could look at it either way, right? You know, maybe when they put it in the village at that point, you could have gotten involved and said, "We're going to need to own that portion of this, and this is our standard." Right? If, it, if it originally was daylight and you altered it to to manual, you know, it's still still nothing that we that we've uh, added to our infrastructure. 
So we should probably return it to the daylight. That would be difficult. Yeah, I don't think it's a park fire. Have you got to overlook that? No. That would be difficult. Because it's been built up so much. Because it's been built up. Well, we, spent how, we spent how much getting that rolled back up then? How much is it? One neighborhood of ten, twenty thousand dollars. Because it hadn't been. Yeah, absolutely. The, so we could because it's something that we didn't do with the village as a one hour. We reopened it because it, it's our road and it couldn't wait for us to figure this out. Uh, but hopefully we can have some plan in place before there's another quick deal. And there's and four or five more that cross the road. Uh, in the in the village, because because the village line it sounds uh in the middle of our property there somewhere. You know, that, I think it's down between the two garages yeah. is where the village line is. I'd have to I'd have to look at it again to be sure. There's probably one. Probably just probably just three, three. That, that would be same that would be on our property. There's there's one that's right on the edge of our property. Same age and they're all the same situation built up to the catch base. Yeah. Well, we could settle all these urinating matches from day one by the town, assuming all, all of that infrastructure and sidewalks too. And then we could do away with the 10 cents on the grand list and then we would maintain all that ourselves. That would get us out all these pissing contests. Did you guys hear Steve and D? Yeah, yeah, it's a little difficult, but I can. So your proposal might be to uh, take over all uh, all sidewalks, all the sidewalks, and all that infrastructure, catch basins, all the stormwater, stormwater. I'm willing to discuss that. I'm not willing to agree with it tonight. Oh, no, 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 certainly, <laughs> certainly I'm not. I, I just threw that out. I, I'm not going to agree to you know, anything. <laughs> That's going to take the legislature. But the, the deal is, you know, that that would be if, uh, you know, that would be one step to get some of the infrastructure out of the village and into the town. So if we had to, we could, we could put a swell on the side of the road and divert it back into the river. That's, that would that would put our culvert back to Lake Hawaii. If we took put a ditch back there, they're saying yeah. it's just real deep. Yeah, it, it would be very deep. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure how much is paid. What's the word for everything? Get off the road. Road. Yeah, because you're, you're coming. You're coming across the road. Oh, we've, got, we've got. There's a lot of parking lots. Cement and pavement. Oh, I mean, no. are you gonna are you gonna tear? Or, or, oh, that's not us. I was just curious. Are you gonna tear our existing infrastructure back to, to bring it back to daylight? I mean, it's not. I, I don't think you can. I, I just. I mean, you, you could do it on the riverside. Yeah, but it still it would put a big gully in my parking lot. Yeah. I mean, I can pull my board and see what, see what their thoughts are, but my position right now is that it's still so, that's not ours. On the riverside? Well, there used to be. You, you took the catch basin out and told me if I would pay for the pay for the material for the new catch basin, he would he would install it, install it. But then, you know, he was a whole different story. And, 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 and so I'm... I'm I, I let him take, I had a catch basin on the, on the river side of the road, which, which was still, still okay. It was, it was your culvert under the ground is bad, but he, but he ripped the whole thing out saying if you pay for the new catch basin, I'll, I'll reinstall that in my parking lot. It hasn't, it hasn't been done. And the reason the catch basin is in there, because if you let the water run over the, over the bank, it washes out, and it has already washed out the culvert that put back in. Is every, 
every every hard rain we get washes a little more. So, so Kingston on the riverside goes into the same culvert and then exits. Well, it did. It, it did. It but, did. But he put a he had to put a bigger culvert in because of the FEMA regulation. Okay. What he told me. So I think I think he just he put that cover across and he was put the catch basin back in with a with a smaller cover. Because that's that's what's setting there. It is, there's a catch basin set, sitting there and, and two two runs of cover. You know, it's an earth throwing out and take a look at the back of those with the finding and but the infrastructure yeah. is it was. I think so. It sounds like a mess. Yeah. Guys so, Steve and Diane, what do you guys think about sending out our foreman with the town's foreman and try to figure this mess out and come back and let us know what they find? Yeah, I think that's what we should do. Yeah, I think it's the only thing we should do. Um, and I really like what Mike said. I'd like to have the town take over the sidewalks and and the roads. I'm with him. So, what, what basis do you uh, make that statement with? Well, I just think it would be, uh, it would stop people from arguing about whether we own it or whether they own it. And uh, we would send somebody out and get it fixed. Uh, but I, I do agree that we should send somebody out and look at it for sure. Okay. Well, what's that going to solve? Well, at least they'll come back to this, what, the two boards with, you know, this is what we had, you know, just an inventory of the thing. Yeah, I mean, well, look, it's look, experts, look at instead of us all sitting here like speculating what's not. Sitting here. We can, I mean, CJ, I, I mean, now they're talking about having a, a, you know, a box on one side and on the other, and unless there's me questioning going, so I want to find out what's there yeah. for sure, and then we can. Now, then we can. Once we yeah, know they that. should draw up a map of yeah the site and what okay. is exactly. where. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. And what right. putting couldn't work because yeah. if we're going to sit here and have a good conversation about whether a catch basin, mm -hmm. basin, or a daylight would work. It's irrelevant if they're not informing us, help inform us. Then they should probably be here. Okay. This, I'll get a hold of uh, Troy and let him. Just, just, a, just a little side note. It's great, it's great to study stuff, but it's the 20th of September. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it really ought to be done before freezing up. Yeah. Because where you have a really big problem is, you know, when you get rain in the, in the winter and you get snow melt. So the, the catch basin needs to be put back in. What, what you, well, either way, it's going to be right. So, I mean, if you're going to say you're approved on task, and it's getting that infrastructure done, we can do this on, it's going to take for right? Well, we're in so many yeah. catch bases. Yeah, no. And we're creating a system that's not the town's responsibility. So, I don't think that our guys should do that without at least a tacit agreement that once we make that change with your permission, that it wouldn't be town's responsibility. That we don't. Well, that that catch me from around my property, so I don't think it would be your responsibility. But because you took the other one out that was that was still working, yeah, and 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 told me that you would put it in if I paid for the catch me. I think you. I think you might at least do that part of the job. I mean, if you say even, even though you, you, know, you should, like, yeah, you know, the only thing that I'm a little concerned with is we may want to check the league on it. Is if it's not if it's going in our system and it's not on our within our right of way, I'm not sure if we should be working out there. If we should have been, then you shouldn't have let him tear it out. Yeah, a lot of things shouldn't shouldn't happen, but well, so, yeah, so you know, your your employee your employee created the past, so well, something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. well, I'll get hold of Troy and let him know to get with your guy and at least take a look at kind of what the hell's there. What have you got? Well, I'll uh, get with Jason. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Heaven present us with something. So Troy meet up with Jason. Okay, uh, a couple of additional items. And that's why Doug Moldy is here. Doug was part of our ground field uh, study committee that uh, he and Leah were sort of the experts on. 
and uh, was looking at the whole telephone site, which took in all of uh, Cochran Stearns, Manchester property, down Railroad Street to include Hole. It was a major, major potential uh, for redevelopment of that whole area. And the prior select board and prior trustees supported this endeavor. And it sort of fizzled out because of money sources dried up. But Doug has been contacted by LCPC that apparently there's a lot of money that's being thrown in this, this direction. And so there might be value in the town and the village uh, having Doug represent us on that committee again. That's why he just called me today and I thought this was a perfect opportunity for both meeting. Maybe I'll let Doug explain it better. I don't know where they're sitting in this group. I think if you sit over here, Doug, we can hear you better. And Mike's the microphone's right behind you. That's the microphone he's working off for Mike. Yeah. Okay. Right here. Will that be, is this close enough? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Brian and I have been getting mail from the Marconi Planning Commission. They want to start up the, the Brownfields Advisory Committee. It's, it, it, it is a kind of a, it's not the, the uh, LCPC, but it makes recommendations to the board for, for money, the uh, for expenditure for Brownfields. Um, there's uh, 20, $25 million that the state has, has appropriated for Brownfields. Um, and we had, the village sponsored the Brown, area-wide Brownfield study before. Uh, and I don't know if, if you folks sat in on any of the meetings, but it clearly is, a, there's a large plan out. It went from, it took up to, uh, to um, Main Street, including Hoag's buildings, went all the way down. And uh, it's because with Brownfields, you can expand it because of, uh, it's, it's a it's federal program and you're allowed to do that. There's a really terrific, there was a housing study portion of it. My role in this was I was the town representative. Brian was the backup representative to this uh, Brownfields committee that made recommendations. So um, Meredith Dolan had appeared previously before on that and the, the village had made requests to the committee for funding, I think for your powerhouse project, uh, things like that. Um, I, we have a large brownfield out there, uh, the town and village. Uh, the town and village need, should they wish to turn that into some sort of an economic development project, they need to get started and have some community input into and in, in planning on what you might want to do with what's currently the food shelf building. What If that there, there's a... The area-wide brownfield plan, if you look at it, figures that that area out there is a prime rec area development area with the rail trail. And uh, I'm, I'm interested in serving on the brownfields, but I'm not interested in serving on the brownfields committee if this town and village aren't willing to, 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 to put some time in and figure on what they might, might do. Anybody, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't possess any great wisdom or anything on that, but, uh, uh, there needs to, you know, for me to, you know, having gotten off the board, having Eric say, you could come to a meeting tonight. I was hoping he was inviting me to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the case. Uh, so um, I, want, I just wanted to tell you that this is an opportunity, you know, um, you could have another representative, you could have Brian, you could have somebody from the village, uh, but you folks ought to be thinking about, unless you become shovel ready at some point, you'll never be able to move ahead and tap into the funds that are now coming into. Now, you, it, you know, they said there's, you know, there's projects that are you know, waiting, there are projects that might be pending, you could come up with. What you really need to do, if, if you're going to move this along in one, two or three or four years is to start. One of the ways, you know, so, I'd be willing to serve, you know, I don't know if they would appoint me or not, uh, but, you know, pending while well, you folks develop something, but if you, if you aren't going to move on it, you know, uh, I'd rather spend my time on, you know, duck on it or something, you know? Uh, so I just wanted to tell you that, that this is a, a prime economic development location. There's money out there. 
and it takes effort to get it shovel ready to get it grant ready you know you there are first you know level ones you know you, you start small there's been there's been talk net has been working for a long time he brings up when i was on the select board what are we going to do how are we going to repair this building things like that this cohort building so if you folks want to turn this thing into a resource for the community you know one you should have a representative and secondly, you ought to think about, you ought to pick up the area-wide brownfield study that was done for the village and figure out what small slices you might want to start with. So that's my, uh, that's my. Uh, and I know you guys are probably pretty much one so Yeah. Um, so if I remember, this is a study that's a while back and then it went to the town and they came with all kinds of different ideas, everything from like an apple orchard to a ski resort to, you know, was that was that the time frame that? Well, we, I don't know. Well, there there were you know we we had meetings were, and people were suggesting. Yeah, so. yeah, and and they came back with a plan. There was a lot. Crane was, I think Crane did the housing study. You know, there was a. Uh, you know, we're looking at we're trying to resurrect Railroad Street. We're looking at uh, uh, Bobby Hoy. I don't know if any of you attended the meeting. Bobby Hoy did, and I thought it was a gift to him, but he had apoplexy. You know, on it. Uh, you know, because they were planning about his his property. Uh, uh, but you know, now that that is vacant uh, or not as occupied as much as it was before, with the, with the uh, with the, the car repair thing, that, that may or may not be. You'd have to then do a level one evaluation to determine whether or not that building is uh, a brownfield style too. So it may be prime development land, you know, very important land for the community that the, you know, this was the village's initiative. The town, the town, I was just the town representative. I, I sat up there and was hoping that there'd be a project coming forth from the village. You know, we got some from Morrisville and, and uh, the, the LCPC grant ran out. What we did is we, you know, the different organizations, different parts of the state would apply and they shared the money, you know, uh, to do because if you didn't have it, you'd lose it. So, you, so they shared it. So that, that may still continue, but uh, here is my LCPC is saying we have, we're going to, there is money in this state. Uh, and I'm telling you that the reason to do this isn't necessarily because you'll get this money, but down the road, you need to get started. So, what are now, the, so what is the focus of the, the money that's available now? Is it, you, you mentioned recreation, but I didn't. No, that was that was what the uh, the, the recreation is. Uh, here, here's what uh, I, I asked Brian if he would contact uh, Melanie Riddle is, is her, her name. Um, and she, she said, uh, here, letter to Brian. Hi, Brian, we're looking to get the committee up and running because there's funding available soon. The 2021 legislative session allocated 25 million to characterize and clean up brownfield site. Currently, there are a handful of active and prospective sites that have been identified that could be more actively pursued with this funding opportunity. It would be great to have your input on these projects. What I'm telling you is that, yeah, you got these projects coming in, but we have a project that we need to get into the, into the or I think you have, I would recommend that it would be good for the village, the town, and this community that we, that we represent to get into the to get into the queue, so that at some point when this kind of thing comes up, you have you, you you're able to step forward and say, well, we would like the money for the phase one evaluation for this, things like that. You know? Get our foot in the door. Well, yeah. you know, I, I've been going there, so I presume a lot of the the you know for the two or three years that I spent there, you know, I know the players. I presume there'll be somewhat similar players coming back. Uh, and you uh, and, and I know the voting methodology and things like that. Uh, it all can be learned, uh, but I think you need a foot in the door. I think you need to figure out what you're going to do with this, you know, a small slice, you know, the house, a building, something like that. Uh, and uh, if you don't start doing it, you'll never be ready when the brownfield money, you know, you won't be in the position where we have active projects ready to go. Because you will not be able to the liability that's associated with this with this project out there, with that land out there, anybody that buys into it, unless it's gone through and been cleaned up to the barnfield spec, attaches to them. That's what you offer to them. 
is you offer you offer no liability for for land that, that that's will be very very usable. So I'm saying there's community effort that needs to get involved in this, and uh, for me. It'd be worthwhile to do if the community would be in on the ground floor and start thinking about it. If otherwise, duck hunting is much better. So it's not an ultimatum. It's, it's just, no, 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 you know, no, 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 no. So the first step would be authorizing you as a representative. Well, that's a town. That's a town decision. Right. Okay. They can authorize me, but I might not take it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you're supposed to be hunting. That's why you got out the select board. <laughs> well, you know. I have the, uh, you know, I'm a Minnesota Twins fan, so I've got my Sirius XM radio to, so I can put it in my car when I go home. I'm trying to do the best I can. This is just so, you know, my judgment is this is a terribly important piece for this community, you know. We have the, the um, area that we're trying to develop up here. You may find that your do per dollar cost, that this is this this would be where your development ought, ought to go, you know, for, for employment here. You know, it would be uh I'm, I'm not trying to throw one out on, on, under the bus, but I'm, I'm just saying this is this is a lot of work has gone into that, a lot of money was spent on it, and it is uh, if you've been standing on the rail trail watching the people go through, you you know. Perhaps we'd have a camping area associated with this. You know, who knows what you'd have there? There's also We're the bike about the brewery, they? well, you know, I, I think yeah, what's that's just what we need. Yeah. Anyway, no, so so I'm suggesting we need work. The representative is one thing. You know, you should have a, you should have somebody there watching it, but it's not going to come about this year or next year. This is something that, that that's a three, four, five year project right. for the community. So that's that's why I volunteered to spend this much time here. Perfect. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, okay. Was Sorry. A before um, the town did uh, sponsor or not sponsor, but we did uh, agree with it, and we did put down on this. Okay. Right. Yeah. You had, I guess, Meredith or Boy was Boy. Well. Was the the um, early white brownfield study was totally done under the auspices of the village. Okay, my my appointment to the this kind of ad hoc committee, advisory committee, you know, uh, was you know totally separate from that. But I was always hoping that there was something that would come through, you know, uh, because it was jointly owned property, right? Yeah, that's where yeah. It, it's, it was. It's an area that's crying out for that type of thing. So I would suggest maybe the first step for us would be uh, pulling that study out, pulling the dust off of it. Um, I know some of us in the room haven't seen it. To those of us that have, it's been a few years. So we can- That's what that you have, Ryan? It lets me have access to it? Yeah. Could you get that out so that's the trustee and stuff? So. Yep, I should be, I, I think it's on our website too, but yeah, I, okay. yeah. I, I can get that out to everybody. Okay, then appreciate it. And CJ, you participated in that when that was done. Excuse me? You participated in that too. Yeah. So we're fortunate to have a landowner who participated in our, our meeting tonight. But well, we should read that and then come back and discuss it in our different meeting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the thought was just to get it back out here because apparently it's a bunch of money. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't remember the specifics of the study except for remember thinking, wow, that's really visionary. I mean, this could really be a game changer for the community. The only drawback for me at this point is that we just don't have a lot of staff on the community. You know, right? So kind of putting you out there probably without really having a lot of support to be able to put behind you initially. But we'll do our best. Okay. So you'll hear from us. Congratulations. We come with a little money. Yeah. It either comes with money or uh, it comes with a uh, promise of a better shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Yeah, well, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is that you really need to follow through on the other parts because almost anybody can serve. You know, uh, I, I offer something, I'm willing to serve. 
Your time is valuable. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I want to thank Doug for coming because I think what he's talking about is really important for the village and the town. And um, I'm glad that we're going to be looking into it and I hope we move forward on it. Thanks, Doug. You're welcome. Thanks, Doug. See you in the week. Yeah. Uh, if I can put in a little plug, uh, there's been a lot of news articles recently about about brownfields, in particular, some property in Springfield. That's, oh. The state, for the first time, is adding some state money to the federal money that goes to brownfield development. And that's what uh, I think it's Rebecca was talking about, where she said that there, there's a lot more money available right now than there has been in the past. So this is a good time to join in the discussion. Yep. Yep. Very much like our. Main Street plan, you know, that turned around in, in a week or something when, when there was a call and uh, from Lady's office, and we had something that was ready to go. If you have it ready to go, that's the only way to get this done off the ground. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And my, yeah, merger discussion. Between uh, six and seven months ago, uh, Town and village voters gave the, their elected officials the charge to enter into discussion for merging the town and village. Nothing has been done, uh, to my knowledge, and uh, and I understand that you know the village is you know having some problems with it. the village manager. Uh, time is tight, uh, but I for one do not want to go before. The voters of the town in March and have somebody ask me or our board what have we done with that vote? It was an overwhelming majority of our constituents who wanted us to talk about it. So I don't want to go before the townspeople on, in March and say, we haven't done a thing. And so we've got to get together and either form some committees or we've got to at least do something. Now, whether or not individual board members want to merge or not is actually material. Uh, the people have decided that they want us to look into this and we need to get moving forward, whether any of us like it or not. So that is our duty as elected officials. And we're going to do this, I don't know, but we've got to get moving forward. I agree with everything you said. They may disagree with it. When do you think the village would be ready? I would hope we got um, um, I, mean, I, I, I think at December ish, maybe for that because of the holidays. So I'm, I'm thinking the first part of January. Uh, give us time to get the stuff we've got to take care of. We got to take care of that stuff. I'm not saying we're not the stuff that's you know first on our plate, and then and then we'll have time to give it. I don't want to meet and try to go through the we're going through the night. You know, just we, we don't know what we're talking about. I want to have the board up to speed. And I don't. I can't trust the amount of time that we've already spending on on the current issues and add that to it and have any have any validity to the opinions of the uh the board members without getting more time to do it that's that's my take and i think i've talked to eric a couple times on this and, and i think the january timeline is kind of what we estimated would be and i, I think following that track is still going to be and it still puts us in before march um i don't anticipate any kind of solution before that but we'll have started conversations that we can we can start to break it up into pieces and then meet once those pieces have been investigated in my thought process. Do you have something different you'd like to do? No, uh, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I talked about it today. Uh, we need uh, to, and I hate to use the word consultant, but we're going to have to have somebody that's going to have to kind of walk us through this whole process. So uh, hopefully it isn't going to cost us an arm and a leg. 
Uh, I guess my point is I, I don't want to see Johnson go through the agony that all of Essex did for the last 20 years. Uh, and hopefully I'm not wrong in the amount of years it took them, but it took them a long time. And I'm sure it cost them a lot of money. And, and I'm not looking to spend a lot of money. And there, anybody knows me, I'm about as cheap as they come. And I don't want to spend any more than we have to, but I want to get a good product. And, uh, you know, we're just throwing stuff out. I, I was not too happy with the product we had last time. Okay. Um, I was actually hoping that we had a good enough product so people could understand the whole situation and actually had a vote last year on whether or not we're going to merge or not. Uh, so we need to get to that point where we have a consultant, we have a study done, and we have every single thing so everybody can understand what's going on. And then we need to take a vote. So my thought process following, following your line of thought there is that we start with the report, and I agree the report's not great. You know, it's been a while since I've read it, so I can't get specifics, but I'm sure we will once we meet in January, if everybody agrees on that, is that we take the information that we can, that can retrieve out of that document and then look at it and go, what, what other information do we need so we can have directive to know where to go. Right. That, that, right. that would be my thought process. Instead of, instead of spending money on another, another consultant that's going to come back or something that's going to be, you know, let's let's find out where this document, in our opinion, is or isn't deficient and find out how to ascertain that information and make what we need to be able to make a recommendation. That's, that would be my thought process. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think just jumping to consultant is... Yeah, yeah. Right. We, we, we've already done shit tons of money on, on one already. Yeah. Let's find out what we do or don't like about what we got. Find the gaps. And then how do we get the information? Is that something Brian can get? Is that something that we have to hire a consultant for? Is it, you know, let's fill in that piece of information that each one of us needs to be able to be positive on which direction we're going to head. Yeah. And I said, personal opinion makes no difference in this. We got we to, until we get all the information and get informed, none of us have the right answer. I, I'd even say uh, there are things we could do without a consultant. We can look at other, I mean, there are 250, how many, 251 towns in Vermont area? Yeah, <laughs> 250 towns. You know, there, there are other town village structures that we can be looking at or at least compiling a list of. Have the, has there been anyone that's merged in the last 30 years? We can be studying them and talking to people who are involved. Um, so I, I, I think there are things we can do. I think sort of spending money on it. The other thing where we will need help is, is how do we do it? What makes sense? I mean, if, if, so if so if the, if the voters come back to us and say merge, that's going to cost money. Like, I mean, that, I think the voters have already said whether good or bad, we presented them with a report that laid out some of the benefits <coughs> and some of the reasons that wouldn't be good to merge. And they didn't have a recommendation, it was just some pros and cons. And the voters overwhelmingly said, yes, go forward and have the discussion on merger. Well, I think now it's us, and we need to develop a plan on how we will merge and present it to the voters, and they can give a yay or nay. But I think it's I'm halfway where you are. I, I, I think the recommendation was to continue communications between the two groups, which Mike's pointed out tonight we have to do. I, I didn't interpret that. Maybe they got the record wrong because I was actually a voter, not a member of the board at the time. But my, my record the thing was continue, continue communication, not, not to merge. I don't think that vote was true with that. Everybody else in memory, too. So, so yeah, so I mean, as far as Moving forward with the merger, no, I think it's we need to communicate. I think each board and each member has to come up with their opinion once we get all the information and present that to the public. Not a not a report that I want to say eight percent of public didn't read. They listen to their mother or their cousin or whatever. You know what new things are going here yet? The ninety two. You know, let's make sure that everybody that's going to vote has the option to get this. Both 
court's opinion on what we recommend. And I'm not going to make my opinion, so I get all the information I need to make a recommendation. I need to remember these to make a recommendation. There's a couple things I don't want to be clear on. I don't want to stand up for town meeting and say, because we didn't get this started until just a couple months ago. Like, the town is, is ready to go on this. Like, we'll meet in January if you don't want to get the short January, but we're ready to meet for our uh, If that's possible. If we're going to get into specific, I would caution about January. Our budget is due at the end of January. Uh, we're typically meeting a lot in January. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just the, the point we're making. So we're, we're ready. Yes. Well, okay. No matter when we do it, it's not good in February. They're doing their budget. Right. Yeah. And then, and then we're in the meeting. So yeah. Yeah. There's just no, never enough time to do anything. But the thing is, getting back to the the other point I'd like to make is just that. It'll be really helpful for us too if you guys have a uh, village administrator. Because right now, as with like the website thing that just went on, like that's a town village thing, but it all fell on town staff to do that. Um, you know, when it didn't go as everybody wanted it to, it fell on town staff. So, so, <laughs> so you so you so you understand our urgency of having things that we got to do. I totally we talk do. about this. So yeah, so I just want to point out that's that's exactly what we're talking about. I totally get it. So. I totally get it. Uh, well, 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 it's Absolutely. It's kind of hard just to say, oh, we're busy, whatever matters. We'll do it five months from now. Yeah, but we're going to complete more of a man. You guys can be helpful with Friday night. We do love Friday night. We'll probably have to say that. Well, speak for yourself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> question asked, question answered. I think, I think my board is going to be ready in January. You know, if it's a bad yeah. time for you, we'll. Maybe we'll start out with these and maybe break up. Maybe me decide what we need to decide what we need to do, break up the committees and then come back and yeah, whatever. You know, that way there we're not sitting here and people might think about the run it. I mean, honestly, what I've done well is that if you have committee members, if you have trustee members who are willing to come and help you with the meeting, then that's fine. Yeah. Like if you have committee members who are willing to give time to start thinking about what our first meetings would look like. And you know, reading through the report and organizing, I think it could do what Mike was suggesting and get like some working groups together and then yeah. not have our total meeting until then. But at least we're acting on something. Yeah. So I'll add to my, my next agenda is we'll we'll get together if we have people that are going to do a dance team type thing. Yeah. And you guys sign, you know, I think Mike volunteered the day. We're the dance team on the merger. <laughs> we're still on duties <laughs> negotiation. Right and that's the, that's what Eric and I are going to use every time something comes up. <laughs> that we need to be volunteers that's for. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> but I want to clarify this business with the consultant. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about a full blown consultant. Everything everybody talked about is fine. We need, but we will need somebody probably. To tighten things up a little bit That's a, yeah. for us, yeah. you know, and I and believe me, I don't want to spend any more money than we have to. So we have to do something. So we'll, I'll, I'll put together the next meeting that uh, Steve wants to do like a strike team type thing, and uh, whoever here has got the volunteer, obviously, like, you're ready. Um, well, <laughs> I was here ready. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so well, you're really clever. You know, don't sell yourself Thanks, short. <laughs> Smart. I know you're angry. I I would like to clarify one thing more if I could before the meeting is over with. Uh, I objected uh, to that uh, IT contract uh, because I believe that we violated our own procurement policy that we approved the other night. I think we should have had two bids on this. And uh, even though you said in the beginning, Brian, and well, we're probably not going to do much better if we go out to bed. I still think we should have gone out to bed. But it wasn't a time, obviously. It wasn't a time, which was a time. Yeah, I know, because we were all back and forth, stinking corners there. This should have been brought up long before now. But I'm not going to you know, beat that dead horse. <laughs> we, we understand. We, it should have been. We're too late for that. I think okay, it shows a slight board. It's not going to be.